Zika! Millsurp Garage. So what have we here for you today? Some friend at work um, was like, hey, you're into that military stuff, aren't you? I got some books I was going to throw out. I figured maybe you'd be interested. I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll take a look. And this is what the guy had. A bunch of field training manuals. And uh, I'll show you along. I'll go from the oldest ones that were there to the newest. I suppose this was the owner. This one is FM 2120, March 6th, 41. Field Manual of Physical Training. And this is just showing uh, exercises, how to respond and obey the commands for during the exercises. Interesting. That couldn't have been their favorite one. Uh, FM 2330. Field Manual of Grenades. June 15th, 1942. These are Army, I believe. They're issued by the War Department. Maybe they give these to all the branches of the um, armed forces. I'm not really sure. But I did see, like, Army specifically list listed on some of these. But this one just says War Department. CG Marshal Chief of Staff. So they issue these. Um, and then I think they update them. They have, like, updates for them and things like that. So they put different pages in here. Sometimes you'll see that there's, like, updates. But this one is interesting because you don't really... You know, you don't really see or read much on grenades. This one I was poking through already. It's pretty interesting. It pretty much breaks it down and tells these guys, you know, everything about them. I really wouldn't think that they would even learn that much about what makes them work and the chemical compositions of the explosives and everything. But... They, uh, they definitely learn enough to be uh, pretty proficient with, uh, you know, even just the understanding of how these things function. And uh, look at these just amazingly detailed procedures for training for how these, how to throw them, how to take cover, the types of damage that the different ones do this, this you know, because there's chemical ones and smoke ones, fragmentation grenades, there's all kinds of grenades, specific procedures to use during training, specific treat procedures to use for launching them with, look, here's my 1903 site right there, that's it, that's the, uh, what's that called again, that, that guy, um, I forgot, but you know what I'm talking about, that's the site right there. And then this is like procedures for using the rifle for shooting from different positions for launching the grenades. Pretty wild. I like that one. Um, this is another old one that's kind of weird. This one's different than all the others. It's field fortifications. And this is like for a special, the Armored Force School, Fort Knox, Kentucky. This one is specific for that, for that place. And it looks a little different than the others. And look, it has a, this is a training memorandum. So, uh, this says that this, a copy of this training memorandum will be inserted as the first page under the cover sheet of all printed lessons. I guess they're talking about this page specifically. I'm not sure, but this one's kind of different than all the others, so it'd be interesting to see exactly what uh, the story is with this one, because it says Hasty Field Fortification. Oh, I thought that was like the, a company, but I guess they're just saying it's Hasty Field Fortifications, like digging something quickly. But this was pretty interesting to read, how if you have a, uh, if you have a shell hole, how you could use that cover and know the procedures for that digging a prone shelter these are foxholes the different ones a two man one man and uh 
So depending on where the enemy is, exactly how to dig it. That's a pretty deep hole, man. You want to dig one of those. And uh, he was on shooting shells. You could be completely in cover and shooting shells out of there. Interesting stuff. How to string barbed wire. Check that out. There's a special way on how to string wire. High wire entanglement. Double apron fence. Interesting. So that's for the armored force school. So I guess these are just special ones for just certain guys that trained in certain specific things. And this one's also from the 40s. Now we move into the 50s here. Camouflage materials. Just because these move out of like World War II times doesn't mean they're not amazingly interesting. Um, this one has one of those memorandums. See how this gets this gets added. See, this is um, FM 5-22, January 56. And this says FM 5-22. 19th January 1956 is changed as follows. All references throughout the manual to tables 1 through 11, 13 through whatever here, um, are rescinded. So they, they're adding in other materials here. Other, see this, they must have redone these, some of these charts and some of this info to update it. They don't just get rid of the whole manual. They they just have this as, as an update. Interesting. It's just... Yeah, they just updating these. These some numbers and some interesting stuff they're updating here. And uh, this here is the manual itself. Uh, this, I found these like, very interesting. The camouflage ones. There's a couple of them. But uh, it shows, like, actually overhead views of what it looks like. And if you do it right, uh, what it looks like from above. And some of these things, like, you're, you're covering things like this, whatever. That's from ground level. You're just like, oh, my God. Yeah, right. That's really covering the fact that that's a tank. But then when you see it from up above, it's amazing. Like, building things like this out of just straw and, you know, basic, a basic frame even made with rope or whatever. See, they make them with rope, and then they just throw, like, leaves and stuff on top of it. They show how to do that here, and then from the from the top, it's incredible. Um, that It's just completely not even noticeable. And then I'm sure the bomber, if there's a book for bombers, they have little tricks on how to identify. And this color chart, you can see this kind of bled through to the other side, because these are weird. These are textured squares here. And look at the, how vivid that color looks on them and how you can actually feel the texture of them. Pretty wild. And uh, what else? There was, here's, here's some of these overhead views that they show how to, how to hide a landing strip. And they, it just looks like a street with uh, trees on either end and how to put these trees to hide landing strips. Putting this on top, see what I mean? Like from ground level. It's pretty ridiculous to think you're hiding a house like that. But from above, the way they put this stuff on top and then put shrubbery from above, you're only seeing the two-dimensional flat surface, so you don't even see that house at all. Um, it's pretty wild. There's the... You know, they talk about different terrains. And I think it was the other book that had a lot more overhead views, but uh, fascinating... What else we got? Use and installation of booby traps. This one was freaking awesome. Let me see. Some of the stuff that I found in here was, was just downright wrong. We talk about plastic explosives, demolition material and stuff. And well, Look at this. This is really wild here. Look. They show about how to like build this thing where is a pressure switch, it's a firing device, a detonator, the main charge, and how, like, if someone sits in that chair, it's all over. <laughs> it's just, remember how with the, the tonics I was showing you that, like, I was telling you that, like, the, that explosives company that that guy worked for, um, 
uh, it, it wasn't just that they just made explosives, that they actually, the reason why, like, the guys were really good at building a 45, at, like, actually making a smaller 45 and milling it out and actually doing all that metal work and that construction is because they weren't just an explosives builder. They were, they would make explosive devices. So this is what I'm talking about. This is like a, you know, real, real intricate, devious work here, you know. Look how they would lay a rifle on the ground and have something attached to it, a wire, that when you would pull that out, the spring would shoot, but doink, and it would hit into this main charge. That's a percussion cap, like a primer, and then the main charge. So it's kind of like, this is, would be kind of like a charge striker in a pistol, and this is like the sear. So it's like very similar, so when you would pick up the gun, you would, you would open the sear, this charged spring with a striker would strike a, like what's basically like a primer and that would set off this main charge and then kaboom. And they show like a, a different one here. It's not the spring loaded. This one is a spring that like has a flapper that comes across like that, that hits this and sets off a charge. So yeah, there's like different types of uh, ways to set these things off. This one is more like a pressure switch so that when, when these binoculars are picked up it allows that to spring forward and there's no way to get out of there as soon as that springs forward it's like instant explosion sick right there's and there's a million of them these are like trip wires this one's with close pins and like this is is this crazy look at how detailed this book gets this is we're just scratching the surface we're on page 27 this book is like 200 pages long look at all the Look at all of this uh, craziness that the army would be teaching. It's insane. So that's uh, FM 5-31, January 1956, use and installation of booby traps. Evasion and escape. Um, this one was pretty cool. FM 21-77, December of 58. I think this was the one that showed, I was like reading it, and it said about how like if you get away... And you find a, what do they call it? A, um, it was like a local person, but they had a, a certain word for it. What the hell did they, what the hell did they call A native, that's what they called it, a native. So like if you escaped and you ran into a native that looked like they were going to help you and they would say, oh, I know where, I know where there's some Americans, I'll, I'll bring somebody to, to help, you know what I mean? And they would leave, they would say, it said like, get out of there and go someplace that's within eye shot that you could observe what's going on. So if the guy comes back by himself or with an American, you can always run up and go like, I'm here, I'm here, you know, but like, but if he comes back with three or four, uh, you know, of the enemy or whatever, then you know, you, you're, you're able to escape. So it's like just little things like that. But, but the book is full of stuff. This book is like, no pictures, nothing really pictureable in this book, but there's just a whole bunch of information about escaping and how to be smart about staying on the lamb and stuff like that. A little bit of, little bit of map stuff going on here. Oh, this would show ways to, if you're being followed, I think, to uh, evasion exercises. This, this is interesting. That's December of 58. Department of the Army. See, it started to say... Instead of war department, it started saying like Department of the Army. Maybe during the war, it's called the War Department. Yeah, because these ones from the 50s, right? These ones from war time say War Department. But these ones just from, you know, the 50s just say Department of the Army. Either they changed it or you weren't officially at war. It was called something different. See what else we got here. Camouflage, basic prim principles, and field camouflage. So this other one was camouflage materials. So this was just talking about the materials themselves to use. This one talks about the principles of camouflage. And hey, this was the one that showed a lot of the overhead uh, views uh, and how to, you know, camouflage stuff. Some color pictures s sneaking in there now. Sorry, it's uh, FM 5-20, January 59. And uh, yeah, this was the one that had the, a lot of this, a lot of this overhead views that showed things that were hidden and, and what procedures to use and then what it looked like from above. 
Yeah, some of it was artist renderings like this on how to use the terrain to your best advantage, but there were a lot of real practical photos like, like this is interesting. Shows right way to do it, wrong way to do it. <laughs> it's always good, very good advice to someone to actually show you the wrong way. Is good. Like this one. Explosives and Demolitions. 5-25, May 1959. Explosives and Demolitions, yep. I see bridges. I see cutting steel, where to place explosions against steel, running this wire that connects to the detonators. Lots of stuff here for explosives and demolitions. And now it gets a little weird because it moves into the 60s. So now it turns into like Cold War era stuff. 39-3, uh, effects of nuclear weapons, April 1962. So there's a lot of technical stuff here, but there's also a lot of pictures that are pretty wild. I remember I saw oh, on this, what is this nuclear bomb effects computer? I'm seeing this for the first time. Whoa. Get out. That is sick. Totally wild. I'm going to be playing with that. I can tell exactly, uh, exactly how close or far I could be from it. Oh. So let's see what... I had some pictures of one of these nuclear bomb ones that were... Pretty wild. Yeah, this is way technical here too. This is this is slide ruler stuff right here. Shows some of these pictures are from the sites after they did the testing. Like these after they they would build these buildings near the nuclear test site to see what would happen to them and stuff. That's what a lot of these pictures were in. We show the tests, but I've never really seen much of pictures of this aftermath stuff. Because that was probably all classified. It's pretty interesting to see the cars and the buses and all the stuff that they set up. Trains, boats, you know, what it did to these ships that were docked here. Antennas, telephone poles, piping. All kind of stuff. Surface and subsurface bursts. It was wild. Oh, I've seen this before in the uh, in the video. I think I've seen this house and this tree. Was that a drawing? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so see, then it all gets kind of like nuclear. TM 3-210, May 1962. Fallout prediction. So this one is basically you'd sit here and chart stuff on this graph paper and figure out if you're gonna die <laughs> if something blows up. How close are we? Okay, let's see. Carry the two. We're dead. <laughs> TM five dash three one one. Nuclear warfare and chemical and biological operations. This be interesting for what's going on these days, huh? May 1965. You'll probably learn something uh, in here about uh, clandestine operations where you release biological uh, weapons to uh, get your, uh, your enemy's mind off of uh, you messing with their trade, huh? What do you think? You never know. But I'm sure there's some interesting uh, stuff in here, even though it's from 65. 
That'd be interesting to pour over. Map and aerial photograph reading. This is, uh, see, this is another special one. You can tell just by the way it is. It's just different. It's about United States Army Infantry School, Fort Benning, Georgia. So this is Army, Army Interest Infantry School. It's specific to, like, one special place, January 66. And, oh, yeah, I was looking at this. This one was wild. This one has maps. The map of Washington, Columbus, Georgia, and one from uh, some Vietnam place, the Gulf of Tonkin. And it's these, uh, these types of maps that show the terrain. This guy had been making, like, calculations on here. This is probably using this. There he is, De La Rosa. He was probably using this uh, during his uh, training. There's the maps that go along with it. And uh, here's uh, information on, you know, how to uh, use them. And how to grid out stuff and use these. I've seen guys using that thing. A compass with the thing that flips up. I have no idea how to use that. But uh, interesting. That's uh, photograph reading. Map and aerial photograph reading. Winding down here. June 1968. FM 33-1. Psychological Operations and Army Doctrine. This one was cool. It's all, all about propaganda stuff and information you could leak to the enemy that's for your this psyop that's like the psychological operations called psyop stuff this is actually taught like a lot of people go like oh that's all just you know conspiracy theory crap that they're you know inventing this and making fake stuff false flags and all that kind of stuff this is there's actually books that teach this okay so it's definitely real you know, all that kind of stuff, releasing information to coordinate things a certain way. There's, there's some people that feel that that's the most important facet of war. Organizational concepts. Media. There you go. Face-to-face -face communication. Printed matter. Loudspeakers. Television. Television is one of the most effective media for persuasion. Tell me about it. Television offers many advantages for PSYOP and its wide application in other fields contributes to its acceptance and use. Television is applicable in limited, general, and cold war. It has the potential to educate and influence on a scale never before possible through other media. Hmm. I guess they've made a lot of progress since June of 68 in that respect, I'll tell you that. And last but not least, SM2-1, 2.1.2, December 1968. This one is different, Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense. Uh, this supersedes some other one that they had, Nuclear Weapons Effects. Teaching materials. Yep. You probably know all that stuff, but to them back in this time, it was, uh, I find that there was one that had some real cool pictures of, of, uh, this was it. It's some real cool pictures of post Hiroshima. Not just tests, but actually stuff from Hiroshima. I wonder if I'd be able to find that quickly. Probably not. But it had it showed where stuff that was in shadow didn't get burned and stuff like that. There's a lot of interesting pictures like that that were taken from, actually from there. And uh, I'm not going to find it. I thought it was this book, but I could be wrong. It could have been, uh, could have been one of the others. It could have been this one. And I'm not finding it. So, you could find it. Take a look and find these books. These are 
available I, you see like whole lots of them on ebay and stuff like that but if you're ever wondering what was inside these things that's the kind of stuff that you're looking at and uh i, I i'm finding these uh, uh real interesting and uh thank my buddy at work there that uh, thought of me and uh brought them in to uh, to give to me and uh, that's all i got for you today you'll uh stay healthy and um, see you all next time. Later.